back to another video within the generative AI series. And within this video, we'll be talking about how we can enable the functional calling uh, aspect within our OpenAI system. So, so far we have covered how we can build a text-to-text -text experience with our assistant. Uh, then we moved on to uh, enabling, you know, the talking back feature for our uh, assistant, where our assistant could reply back to us in actual voice. And then uh, we moved on to the voice to voice experience where we're actually asking queries or inquiries in uh, in voice and it's been transcribed. It's been understood by the assistant and the assistant replies back to us just like in a human like voice. So uh, we have covered that all, but what's missing in the whole picture is our our assistant can actually interact with the outside world and this feature sort of enables it so um it's a very strong feature because uh, you know uh, just imagine your assistant doing you know browsing on your behalf or you know um doing your tasks on your behalf or submitting to particular api on your behalf and while you just sit back and talk to your assistant in natural language so that's quite powerful and it's it's quite interesting so let's explore how we can sort of achieve it so uh i have the run life cycle in front of you something that we covered in the very first video and uh, we talked about how these messages uh, that we place within a particular thread actually has to go through uh, some lifecycle events. So they get queued at first, uh, then they can uh, be in progress, uh, they can be canceled, and from there onwards, uh, there are like four stages. They can be expired, completed, failed, and canceled. So if we, if we actually just, you know, uh, focus over here, uh, so we also have a state requires action. So whenever a message is queued, it goes in progress and it can go to requires in action. And this particular state specifies to uh, the function calling aspect itself. So it says when you're, uh, well, when using the function calling tool, the run will move to required action. So whenever uh, this particular state is encountered, you are navigated to this whole different state. Uh, you won't be, uh, you know, going through these stages anymore. Instead, you have to uh, carry out that required action and then the message will again be queued and it will go through its normal workflow. So I want to clarify two uh, major things. Firstly, uh, we enable our assistants uh, to actually know what kind of function we need to be called uh, within our codes workflow. And the assistant itself doesn't call the function. We will be doing that ourselves. Now, this can be a bit confusing. So it's like, if, if we're going to call the function, then how or where does the assistant actually fits in? So uh, normally uh, a particular function can have a lot of, you know, parameters, input parameters, but um, your assistant can really help you in generating those parameters. Uh, for example, if I say I want to buy a t-shirt and I, and I need two t-shirts, so I leave it to the assistant to actually figure this whole thing out, uh, transcribe the natural language, figure out the logic that I need two basic t-shirts and it would actually fetch the product ID for those t-shirts. And it would also make sure that uh, it figures out the quantity of it. And then the ID and the quantity would be basically uh, the output of this function calling that it provides to us. That, hey, user, these are the two parameters that you need. You can call your function with these parameters. And from there onwards, uh, it would be actually in the required action uh, state. And in this state, we have to do a couple of action, including the function calling, and we have to return some kind of response um, to our assistant that, hey, I've called the function and this is the output. When we do that, the function again gets queued, sorry, uh, the message again gets queued, and it has to go through the normal workflow of getting completed.
So I know it's a lot to digest at the moment, but uh, let's just read this out and then we can jump into the code. So uh, uh, the run will move the required action state once the model determines the name and arguments of the functions to be called. Uh, so again, you can have multiple functions and your assistant would actually make sure that, hey, uh, you have these five functions that you've provided me, but this is the one that you need to be called uh, because you have asked for a t-shirt and two quantities. So I'm going to call the placeholder function uh, for you. And these are the parameters uh, that you would require, you know, while the whole calling thing goes on. Uh, but it doesn't actually do the calling. Otherwise, you know, uh, it's still in beta. Uh, maybe sometime in the future, OpenAI evolves that much that the assistants can securely call a particular function. But I think at this particular stage, uh, when we're talking about functions like sending emails and, you know, interacting with the real world, there, there are a lot of security concerns out there. So... I don't think these assistants are that much evolved to actually handle all of that. So uh, you must then run the function and submit the outputs before the run proceeds. If the outputs are not provided before the expires at timestamp passes roughly 10 minutes, the run will move to the expired state. So you can see uh, that uh, when the message is queued, it goes into progress. Uh, it requires action and then it can only be expired. There, there are no links with the other states. The only link it has within the queue state. So we go in this cycle and we actually have to implement the cycle within our assistance code. And that's what we're going to do. So let's jump into the code. I have my create assistant. Um, the the story actually starts from here because we have to uh, create a new assistant for ourselves and we'll actually have to inform our assistant that hey uh, uh you're not just in a retrieval mode anymore uh but instead i would also require the function calling uh functionality from you so the very first thing that we can do uh we can explore a few code snippets over here so when we say function calling, uh, we have a few set of snippets over here. So you can see uh, defining a function. So within the tools, we have to type in uh, type functions. And from there onwards, we can generate a whole block which has the name of the function, description of the function, and the parameters that it takes. So let's get into it. Uh, sorry, uh, we won't be doing this here. Uh, we will be creating another object and we'll be typing in the function over here. And after that, we need uh, this whole function block. I'm just going to copy it like this. But I'm going to remove a couple of things. Uh, for example, currently we're just going to... Uh, experiment with a function with no parameters and something that always returns true so that we can get our you know life cycle states in place so pretty simple pretty straightforward um, with no properties or required states so i'm gonna get rid of all these properties so this is going to be a function that takes in zero params uh, parameters type object we need to give it a name so we're gonna name it place order and description places the order on behalf of the user. Uh, perfect. So before we move on, we get a bit of an error over here. Uh, let me see what it says. So I think it's a missing bracket so i need to move this over here and this over here perfect so let's see uh, by running our assistant okay uh so we have python create assistant.py enter let's wait for a while and this is our assistant id and these are the thread ids uh, let's create a file um, 
details.txt and we can save it over here um, if we need to use it uh, furthermore. Uh, so let's uh, dive into our speaking assistant file. So uh, we've already created a speaking assistant file first. So I'm just going to copy and paste uh, the whole code over here. Something that we have already done and something that's already working. So just give me a while. All right. So um, I have my thread ID and assistant ID placed uh, within my .env files. So we can proceed with the code. But before we proceed, uh, let's run this real quick and just to check if everything is working. Uh, Python speaking assistant.py. Let's talk. Do you have any bags? Okay, our speech not wave file is created in progress. I'm sorry, I couldn't find the information for your product inquiries. Okay, uh, everything seems to be working fine. Let's get back to the code and let's get our function calling feature rolling. So very first thing that I need to do, I need to add a few statuses over here. Uh, I need the expired status because that's part of the function calling lifecycle. So it's just expired and status requires action uh, requires action perfect so let's go down here within our uh, loop that actually only terminates whenever a run instance is completed so obviously uh, if there is a, a point where function calling is required so the status that we're gonna get is requires action uh, I think just to check if it's required action or requires action. I think it is requires requires action. Perfect. Um, so what we really need to do, we need to check if our status is equal to requires action. And from here, we need to, um, you know, cover up a few steps. So the very first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to um, type in a little log function, which says calling function. And I'm going to put this since I need it within the same line. So I'm going to use uh, the end parameter as well. So uh, once we have done that, we need to take three steps. So uh, A, we need to call the function and we need to return the response to our assistant. So uh, if we need to return a response to our assistant, then definitely we have to do it against the identifier. Do we have do we need the run ID over here or do we need a separate ID? Now that's a question. So let's jump into the documentation and I'm gonna jump here. So this is uh, the API where you can actually uh, submit tool outputs to run. Um, so this is where we actually return our response to uh, our assistant. So what it does here, it needs a thread ID and run ID. We already have these boats. So let's see what it requires within the request body. So within the request body, it needs a tool call ID. So the ID of the tool call in the required action object within the run object uh, the output is being submitted for okay so whenever we get uh, the requires action status there will be uh, this object required action which will hold uh, an object called tool id and later on we alongside with tool call id we also need to 
uh, send our assistant the output. So the output of the total call to be submitted to continue the run. So which means that if we don't actually complete this step, our, our state would be stuck in the requires action. And after 10 minutes, it's gonna expire. So there's no moving forward without telling your assistant uh, these whole details. So we have a code snippet over here. Um, so we need to make sure that we're providing it with the right headers. And this is a post call. And within the data section, we have this array of objects. Uh, it says tool output. And uh, within an object, we have uh, tool call ID and we have the uh, any output that we we receive from our function calling. So we have to do this step before calling the function because it takes the uh, return output from the function. 